Greetings everyone, my name is Flair Blitz here and welcome to a visual novel called Fatal 12. Rinka was a high schooler who ran a small cafe named Lion House in place of her grandmother. She lived her life like any other person her age, but one day she was caught up in an explosion while returning home on a train alongside her friend, Naomi. In an attempt to save her friend's life, she shields her on instants the moment the explosion goes off losing her life in the process. However, before she knew it, she was back at Lion House, happily chatting with her friends as if nothing had happened in the first place. So this game has a few dark themes to it, but it's not dark in the way of you want to shield your eyes to it, but just events that transpire. And look at that grimoire as well. So, you don't know where my mouse is just because it's a bit annoying, I think. But let's go into the adventures that is Fatal 12. And it, it was the same developers, Sheikai Project, I believe they're called. They've also made another visual novel a few years ago. A horror-themed one as well. This is really pretty. There are a number of terms used to describe a sequence of events that lead to a specific outcome. Some call it life, others call it a story. One in response for much during a sequence such as choices picked, relationships built, and mistakes made. All of that is for the sake of proceeding along a predetermined path. That is the natural order of a world ruled by the concept of fate. Getting Stein's Gate feeling here. <laughs> fate never strays from its course, regardless of how cruel it may be. My life and the events in it thus far are simply the product of fate leading me to a certain outcome. That's why I've never once given thought to any missed possibilities found along this path. My life has never been anything worth talking about in the first place. I never had the luxury of considering the what-ifs, hypotheticals. After all, I've convinced myself, life has no do-overs. Once the story ends, that's it. Sometimes a game might have multiple endings to it, but the one you're proceeding through now, the life you are living, that is the only ending, the true ending, the canonical ending. How you want to proceed it out, okay. Ah, getting theoretical here. My name is Rinka. I'm not going to try and pronounce long Japanese names just simply because... I have no idea how to start to pronounce that name. I'm a second year at uh, Ameka's Girls University High School, a rather famous all-girls school in the big city. Unlike my middle school, which was a hodgepodge of top students and those who barely showed up for class, this is the realm of refined, wealthy ladies. A realm I clearly don't belong in. In fact, they wasted no time in labelling me as a didiquint of source. One reason, really the main reason, is the golden streaks in my hair. However, it's my natural hair colour, so the school itself has no issue with it. Not like I got hassled for it, either. It's just a bit too out there for these sheltered students. The main reason I chose a mecha was because it didn't seem to have many regulations in regards to appearance. It turned out they just didn't list anything due to its unspoken rules based on being a traditional school. I was pretty peed off when I got treated like a dilettante, despite having not broken any rules at the time. Fewer than three months later, I've stopped caring. Much like how I have my own values, the girls have their own. I can't understand their viewpoint, so it's only natural they can't understand mine. To tell the truth, I am pretty content with making no effort to look at life from another's point of view. That is, until a certain event causes a massive change in my life. It all starts on a certain day before Golden Week. Interesting. You can never change fate. Ooh. Train station. Huh. The station's clock's not moving. 
I wonder if it's broken. I relay my observation to Naomi as we pass through the ticket gate. Oh, you're right. I'm surprised you noticed. It's not often you see something like that happen. Right, uh, um, sorry for interrupting you. What were you saying? Well, uh, well, uh, I seem to have forgotten too. This is Naomi, a first year at Ametra. You might assume that I know her from club activities or something like the student council, but it was coincidence that brought us together. She may be my junior, but I simply see her as a friend because age difference doesn't matter to me. That's very nice, that's a good effort to live by. It doesn't matter how older or younger you are compared to another person, you can still be their friend. We're heading back to my place right now, making our way to the station platform to wait for the train. Ah, you trip over. Watch it. She yelps as she trips over nothing but air. Fortunately, I snag her hand and keep her from falling on her face. Well, she tugs me forward in the process because she's a bit taller than me, but she manages to regain her balance quick. Uh, so sorry again. No, no worries. F thank you so much. Now you're overreacting. I'm not sure if it's due to her meek nature or not, but Naomi tends to trip herself up pretty often. She's the kind of girl that you look at and suddenly feel an inexplicit urge to protect. Nah. Well, um. Hmm, what's up? My hand, please. Oops, I forgot to let go of her after catching her. Uh, sorry, did I hurt you? N no, not at all. It's just, well... She casts her eyes downward as she answers. Maybe I squeezed a bit too tight without realising it. I let go with an apologetic expression. Um... The train's almost here. Let's get going. She fixes her glasses, which have become askew after tripping, and then points towards the platform with haste. Situations like this typically lead to a re replay of the events from just a minute ago. Oh dear. Jeez, you're a real handful. You know that? She bumps right into a passerby the moment she starts to walk towards the platform. Even worse, it causes them both to topple over. I'm so sorry. Mm. Sorry, she's a bit too clumsy for her own good. I make my way over as they get back to their feet. She bumped into what seems to be a young girl. She's about the same height as me, but her face is definitely younger. Sometimes Naomi gets mistaken for a middle schooler, thanks to her big, round eyes. I thought you were about to say something else then. <laughs> Don't think, Tony. But that's not the case with this girl. Hmm? Are you okay? I noticed how pallid her eyes are when I try to speak to her. Her hair is pure white but mostly obscured by her hat. She definitely looks young, but her facial features stand out more than your average person's. It's safe to assume that she's a foreigner, but that means her hair isn't dyed either. Unlike Naomi, this girl had fallen backward. Since Naomi bumped into the girl's bag, you'd think she would have faced, well, fallen face first, but she quickly spun round while falling. Not only that, but she also made sure to cradle the bag that was on her back. Based on its size, I guess she's on 
Uh, get, she's her, here on vacation. Can't read that. Chances are she's carrying something fragile in there, like a camera. She's by herself too, so I'm assuming she came here with her family and has got somehow, somehow gotten lost, or just gone on a vacation on her own. You know, you could just go out on a vacation or by yourself. What I think is a key on her bag at first is actually just a key chain. She hops back to her feet, bag in hand, her glare drilling into me. Hmm? You should apologize, Naomi. She seems a bit too panicked to get up on her own, so I lend her my hand once again. Hmm. I'm so sorry about that. Wait, are you a foreigner? Uh, what do I say in situations like this? Seri? Pardon? You should take a deep breath first. She offers nothing beyond an empty stare as Naomi apologizes and bows her head. She seems like she wants to say something, but for whatever reason, opts not to. And she leaves. Hmm. Is she related to the explosion? Eventually, she runs off towards the platform without making it clear whether or not she understood our apology. She spins around to face us one more time, but I get the feeling that she's locking eyes with me, not Naomi. It's funny, thanks to her unique appearance, she, stand, she still stands out in the crowd. Then again, my hair causes me to stand out as well, so that's probably how she spots me so quickly. In the end, I'm not able to tell she finds her parents or she actually has come here all alone. Um, sorry. Hey now, no point in saying that to me. You did apologize to her. And she. Hey, let me just turn this up a little bit. Hopefully, that's louder. And she didn't seem to be injured, so I guess it's fine. Back on there. Mm -hmm. That being said, you really got to pay more attention to your surroundings. <laughs> Naomi, let's see if you can live up to those words. Right, I'll be sure to use severe caution with each and every step I take from now on. You realize you're going to trip again if you do that, right? Oh. I can't see her anymore. Is something the matter? Don't tell me he actually did get hurt. Wait, he? Wasn't that a girl? Hmm. Was it? You might be right, considering how pretty she was, which means I've been doubt doubly rude. Hmm. The sound of an approaching train rises as our conversation falls. Much like Naomi, we make our way to over to the platform. Try not to trip stepping on this time, okay? Okay. We make our way onto the train bound for Senjuku, having largely forgotten about the person here we bumped into. This was the train at decided fate. We boarded the next train at Atsuko Station. My place isn't that far from here. We first have to get off at Senshiku Station before taking the metro for two more stations. The only issue is that we're making this journey at 5pm, pretty much rush hour, so the trains are packed. Well, they look pretty empty to me. Naomi and I get practically glued together on our journey to Senshiku. It's 
it's my fault that we got in all the foot traffic. Hmm, let's see. Uh, menu. I want to lower the. Yeah. Uh, have that there. No, okay. I just want to lower it so that the train noises aren't as intense. I'm used to it, so it's no big deal. So, sorry again. Huh? Isn't that... I spy a familiar bag on Monster Crowd. Well, the bag itself is standard. So is it actually the keychain that catches my eye? Yep, it's the kit from earlier. Standing right in the middle of the passenger cart. Car. Bag hugged tight against their chest. They're not tall enough to reach the overhead straps, but I doubt they're full over thanks to how cramped it is. Hmm. Suspicious, don't you think? Didn't expect them to be in the same car. Did something happen? Oh, wait. Their bag's open. And what does it contain? The strap has probably unfastened a bit due to people rubbing against it on the train. I'm just worried because the kid didn't seem to have noticed. The other passengers probably don't care enough to notice either. Some are reading the newspaper, others are killing time by checking out all the ads, but most are on their phones. I doubt I would have noticed if Naomi hadn't bumped into them. And that's why I am the only one to see what they are doing. With a deadly serious expression, almost as if they are being squashed by incredible pressure. What's that? Something black is peeking out of a bag. I'm beginning to think that's some sort of explosion. It looks mechanical, but different from a camera or laptop. For whatever reason, my mind leaves to the conclusion that I've only read in fiction. It's a block. Before I can finish, it happens. A flash emits out of a bag. A bar. Naomi! Naomi! Yes, that bag contained a bomb. The detonation is almost instantaneous. A wave of heat propels throughout the main car, well, the train car, enough to feel like my skin has been scared off. A sharp explosion roar comes right after, puncturing my eardrums. I duck in front of Naomi to protect her and then push her away. I feel my body being pushed by the explosive shockwave too. And in that moment, my body is beyond, burned beyond repair within the flames. Mm. That girl is bad news right from the start. However, my consciousness remains intact. Ha! I hear her voice. I don't feel anything anymore. Vivid memories pulse through me, the shockwave, the pain, the heat scaring through my body, and yet, I no longer feel any of it. Okay, my consciousness begins to fade, or maybe I've already lost it. This is but a remnant of it before it fades away completely, by final, fleeting moments of a consciousness drowned in a sea of fire. Rinka! Rinka! My sight gradually fades too. No doubt my consciousness will be spirited away, like a leaf in a gust of wind. If nothing else, being able to hear that voice puts me at ease. Naomi's voice, I imagine. But somehow, there's no arguing that fate has decided to end my life here and now. What about the other passengers? But... Is there an actual save you can perform? Uh, summary, save, data, yup. Excellent. Rinny, Earth to Rinny, Rinka, you there? Rinka, Rinka? 
I hear two voices calling out to me. I know who they belong to without even seeing their faces. Wake up, damn it! Howdy! Welcome back. A sharp pain rushes through my forehead, causing me to finally lift my face off my arms. Uh, no doubt this will sting for a while. You don't say. You don't say indeed. There you go, that's long enough. What happened to the fire? Hmm. Fire? Were you dreaming? Sounds weird. Dream? So I was asleep? Just a little. No need to be polite about it, Naori. For one responsible for waking me up is Mayo, a classmate. As usual, she got her, she's got her wildly coloured hair tied up nice and neat into pigtails. Beside her is Naomi, and seeing how they are still in their uniforms, I guess we just got back from school. In a cafe, we're at Lion House, a cafe ran by my grandmother. The first floor serves as the cafe while the second floor serves as her home. Same as I'm living with her, my room's also on the second floor, although it's probably more accurate to say I'm living on my own right now, considering she's gone off to the countryside to help nurse an ailing, ailing relative, sorry. Hi. Hmm. You're still half asleep, Rinny? Allow the absolute legend to wake you up, then. She clicks her mechanical pen and presses it against my cheek before scribbling all over me. <laughs> Ouch, I'm awake, I'm awake, keep the lead away! Mayo, you're a monster. Naomi is visibly disturbed by how much Mayo seems to have enjoyed doing that. Well, it certainly has helped to wake me up. A lingering issue, however, is that I can't remember why we're here. Sorry, but, um, what are we doing here again? Hmm, oh my, did the pencil technique fail to wake you up? I think my memory's kind of fuzzy thanks to that dream. I can't remember what I even dreamt about. I mentioned a fire that I woke up, but I don't recall being involved in one. The facts that I can't remember are starting to annoy me. Wow, weirdo. Naomi interjects after I fire a glare at Mio. What it turns out. Oh. What it turns out. Oh, for goodness sakes. What it turns out, our class is opening a cafe for the Culture Festival next month. I was appointed as head of a committee for it. She's making no attempt to hide the fact that she's been forced into it. Granted, she's probably the most fit for the job, considering how serious and thorough she is when it comes to this stuff. I heard about your family running this place, so when I asked, you said it was fine for me to tag along. Her explanation helps me grasp the situation. Oh, that's right, I told you to come over so we could chill and hash things out. The store's only open for the regulars right now, since my grandmother's away. Sometimes we get a first timer or two, but I've only got simple stuff on the menu for now, so I can handle things on my own. It doesn't get really busy, so there's no issue in inviting her along. <laughs> That's wonderful to say. As my grand always says, 
Lion House is everyone's second home. So there you have it. Yep, there you have it. I hoped I hear that today. I understand what she means. This is the first time I've been here, but I feel so welcome. Just make sure you don't feel too at home and fall asleep. Oh, shut it. Mind explaining what you're doing here then? Uh, I was bored? Uh huh. Figures. What does your class plan on doing? Uh, can't remember if it was a haunted house or a fortune teller. Something tells me it's going to be fortune teller. Basically, we haven't decided. Really? Shouldn't you have some idea by now? If things will work out one way or another, I hate to say this when you're working so hard, but we don't really care about how it goes. Me and Rini aren't the most popular girls in the class, after all. The committee's making sure we don't get too involved. Yep. Although that's not the only reason I'm helping you, just keep in mind that I'll be busy here sometimes. Oh, Naomi's so cute. Uh, okay, thank you. She nods, struggling to hide her concern after hearing that. She probably thinks we're being bullied. We're used to how we're treated, though. It's not like they're going out of their way to ignore us. They just rather avoid us whenever possible. It's funny, though. Maya still gets along with plenty of the girls, and I'm sure no one outright dislikes me. It might be more accurate to say that they try not to get too involved in our lives. They understand that we're different, so it creates a rift between us. Speaking of different, we're not the only two. Meharo, who's probably at work right now, is our comrade in that regard. Hey, I'd like a nice tea, a nice latte. Please? We don't serve lattes. We have cafe alut, though. That'll do. Yeah. It's probably a French variation of a latte. You realize you're not getting it for free, right? You're not getting that for free either. <laughs> Never mind water. Ah. Fine, it's on the house. Just this once. How about you, Naomi? Are you sure? Hey, don't be cheeky now. Come on, Neorin. This is the cheap steak Captain Rinka we're talking about. Better take her up on this rarest of offers. Well, may I have a black coffee, please? Sure, coming right up. I make my way over to the kitchen, wash my hands, and don my apron. You're a pro the moment you enter the kitchen. That's why my grandmother always tells me, and I believe it. I may be making these for friends, but that's no excuse to do it half hearted. That's a pretty image there. Anyone who offers a black coffee gets a nice serving of full city Guatemalian beans. 
Full City is a roasting method used to reduce the acidic tones of the beans and make them more bitter. Yeah, that's what coffee is. It's a very, 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 very bitter drink. But I like it actually. Beans from Guatemala are typically more acidic than others, so this kind of full roast is the perfect way to balance their acidity and bitterness. I prepare the siphon before placing the flask on an alcoholic, so alcohol lamp. The key here is making sure the flame's position is just a touch to the side of the middle of the flask. Once it starts boiling, I shake it gently, and then wait for the beans to fall once they're all in the flask. It's just a matter of letting them sit until they become fragrant. Here, here you go, Naomi. <laughs> oh wow, what a nice scent. I can smell it from here. <laughs> Thanks. Naomi's comment makes me happy. But I've still got a long ways to go. My grandmother knows how to apply different brewing methods based on the bean type, for example. All I'm doing now is applying her instructions to make things easier for me. There's still plenty to learn. As in with life, there's always something on the horizon to learn. Never stop yourself from learning, otherwise your brain will grow old more quickly, I would say. A. Alright, next up is Mayo's Ice Latte. You make this by preparing coffee first, and then adding plenty of ice into a glass before topping it off with some milk. This way you get to see where coffee's black and the milk's white mixed together in the glass. Once that's done, I jam a straw in it and walk it over to Mayo with some syrup. Here you go, tell me if you need more syrup. Thanks, bunchies. Hmm, I make myself some coffee after that, take off my apron, wash my hands, and return to my seat. This is so much better than... Oh. This is so much better than what I make at home. You're incredible, Rinka. <laughs> this, is a... this is a cafe after all, but my grand is the incredible one, not me. I think cafes are just a sublime place to meet up with friends. Speaking of which, does no one work here? Mmm. Mayo dumps half of the syrup into the cup before even giving it a taste and then pours in the remaining half. Hearing the ice clink as she stares it is nice and satisfying. I mean, it's a pretty small place. My gran handled the place on her own before leaving. So we don't need anyone else. She's taking care of a relative, right? So Yeah, she planned on closing the store temporarily, but I convinced her to let me keep it over whenever I'm not at school. Figured I'd be able to make coffee no problem, but it turned out to be way more difficult than I imagined. Even after a month of trying, she hadn't given me her seal of approval. Yeah, people think that making proper coffee, traditional coffee, a special kind of coffee, has their own way of making it special techniques involved so to make a very very rich luxurious cup of coffee I imagine it would take months or even years of practicing and honing your arts just like of course um, the art style that you see in the game in itself they're probably taking years for the artist to get to this stage the yellow and the black in her hair for example Tada. Yeah, 
ギリギリ旧大店をもらったんだよね。I knew we'd have to close the store at that rate, so I really went for it and managed to barely get approval right before she left. 先輩はいつから一人でお店を開けているんですか How long have they been running it for now? おばあちゃんが田舎に行ったのが3月末だから。私がお店を開けるようになって、だいたい一ヶ月になるね。Hmm. She left near the end of March, so about a month. I take a sip of my own coffee after answering. Definitely smells and tastes a lot better than when I first tried to make some. I used to drink. I'm sorry. I'm used to drinking her coffee, so that I can answer with pride means I definitely get in there. Granted, I'm still a long ways from her level. 文化祭でこの美味しいコーヒーを出せたらいいなって思ったんですけどさっきの話を聞くと難しそうですよね。It'd be nice if we could make coffee as good as this for a culture festival, but I doubt it'd be easy based on what you said. 生徒がちゃんと味の違いわかるかねうちみたいにミルクがないと全部苦いってなる子も多いだろうし。Would they be able to tell the difference? I can see most of the students dumping in milk to counter the ban bitterness, sorry, just like me. So you hit them or you come, I see my thank you. Demo, what does she want? I don't know. 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 I can only imagine how long it would take me to learn, considering you spent a whole month training under your grandmother, not to mention the other people who'd be in charge of making it during the day, too. Yeah, I doubt it'd be possible. The equipment doesn't come cheap either. Oh, はっきり言うね。Talk about relentless. ですよね。やっぱり文化祭だったらインスタントコーヒーの方が良さそうです。I figured as much. We're probably best off relying on instant coffee. I'm just thinking, folks. Would it be better if I turn the voices off and just me reading, or do you like the voices played and then I speak afterwards? Let me know that know down in the comments below. ちょっと待って。私は同じものを出すのは無理って言ったの。わあわあ。As I said, was that you wouldn't be able to make the same coffee as we brew here? え？は？豆はうちがお願いしている業者を紹介すれば安く買える。それにハンドドリップなら器具も手軽に買えるし、学園祭の予算みたいのでも大丈夫じゃないかな。I can set you up with our bean supplier, so you can get those on the cheap. The equipment itself shouldn't exceed your budget either. 入れ方はおばあちゃんに簡単にできるのがないか聞いてみる。いきなりお店みたいに入れるとはいかないかもしれないけど、お客さんに喜んではもらえるはず。But making it, I'll ask my gran if there's a nice and simple method for you. I doubt you'll be able to make it taste the same way as here. But it should be good enough for the customers. Can't say I'm totally confident, but I'll teach you what I can. After that, it's all on you. Ah, I noticed Mio grinning as I finished my spiel. She probably expected me to say that. Hmm. Naomi is obviously taken aback, but she quickly starts to nod and then responds. So many times, I feel bad for relying on you this much, though. Naomi が頑張るなら。それにおばあちゃんから聞いたことは私が教えることになるから、私の勉強にもなる。If you're willing to put the effort in, then I don't mind. Besides, being able to teach you whatever my grand comes up with should help me too. いいんだって。ビータンは見た目のせいでよく勘違いされるけど、実はおせっかいなんだよ。特に自分の家族や友達にはね。No worries, Nearing. People often get the wrong idea thanks to how she looks, but 
Rennie really loves to stick her neck out for others, especially friends and family. No, I don't. Anyway, you game Naomi? Hmm, there's a hint of concern in her expression, but she gives a conclusive response. If you're willing, then I'd love your help. Solid. I'll call you after my grand gets back to me then. Thank you. Guess I'll pop in every now and then when I'm bored. Don't forget that you're paying next time. <laughs> Yes, that's the most important thing of it. It's nothing personal. It's nothing against a friendship. It's called making a profit. <laughs> With that out of the way, we spend the rest of our time chatting together. I have to help a few customers, but don't mind me talking with Mayo and Naomi so long as I get their orders out in a timely manner. In fact, some even join in the conversation, not just because they're regulars, but because I've known plenty of them since I was a kid. They kind of feel like relatives in a sense. Lionhouse has always had that homely feel to it. Both me and my grandmother consider it our second home. That's why I hope it stays that way once she gets back. But Mayo and Naomi left just before 7 p.m. I head up to my room on the second floor after closing and cleaning up the shop. Um. Is there a, a shortcut way of saving the game? Main menu, resume, open card. Okay, what's this about? Card book. Check the situation. Well, there's 12 of them. 12 fatals. 12 fates to look at here. Summary. Those who record time. There's nothing there. <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh, I didn't even read that. Settings. Problem of using the mouse to click is it also does it with the game as well. Okay, we're going to go to my room. Using the escape button helps. i got to be honest. I'm pretty excited about helping Naomi. I enjoy making coffee as it is, so it'll be nice if other people end up feeling the same. Knowing Naomi, she'll probably pick, it up, pick up on it easily enough. Although her clumsiness is a concern. That aside, what was that dream early about? Was that earlier all about? I felt okay once I started talking with Mayo and Naomi, but I can't shake the weird feeling from when I woke up. I've never felt like that before. I can't even say for sure if it was actually dreaming. If I was actually dreaming. Huh? What's that? It was a grimoire. In the middle of telling myself to forget about it and try to sleep, I noticed a thick book on top of my desk. It's an albine colour, with some golden leaf decorations on it. I assume those are, well, these are gears. Hmm. Seems like the kind of book my grandmother would like, but I don't remember putting it there. And when it comes to choices, I love to make a save so that I preserve this outcome. Let's have a look. I take care when cracking it open, trying not to get it dirty. What the? For no page inside, rather, there's a rectangular gap in the middle. I close the book immediately, having more questions now than I've, when, when I've spied it. Might as well message Gran about it tomorrow, considering it's already this late. Who would it be at this hour? My phone vibrates after I turn the lights off and hop into bed. It's a message from Naomi. Let's see. Thank you for offering to help. I'm looking forward to this. She's a sincere girl, isn't she? <laughs> I send a quick emoji in response, and then place my phone beside my pillow without checking to see if she reads it or not. 
Nice. Where are we now? Huh? I'm pretty sure I'd fallen asleep, but I felt conscious. Except, I can't move my body, or even speak. Is this sleep paralysis? Or maybe it's a lucid dream? Yeah. Hey. I hear a man's voice, but I don't know to whom it belongs. A figure appears soon after, but I can't make it out all that well. It's someone slender, with a vaguely andro androgynous face. I can't respond, so I wait for him to continue. I see fate has led your life to its conclusion. <laughs> no need to get depressed, though. You've been given the rare chance to live again over the next 12 weeks. Surprising her? Yeah, tell me about it. Don't give a wrong idea. There's nothing uniquely special about you. It's all down to the fate you carry. He spouts his nonsense at me in a calm, almost rehearsed fashion. Who am I, you ask? Also nobody special. I'm just the one who watches you from above. Under normal circumstances, I'd never meet with anyone personally, but fate has deemed that your dreams will connect you to here. Anyway, I had plans for more introductions, but I think that's far as, as enough for now. But before the curtains rise in this play, let's kickstart your memories a bit. The man disappears as soon as he stops talking, and my consciousness fades away once more. Mm, until the next time, then, it would be... The fire. Flames envelop me. Flames powerful enough to flake the skin from my bones. Flames that produce enough smoke to smother my lungs. My life turns to ash. My inability to move even my fingers tells me as much. I hear someone shouting. Whoever it is keeps shouting over and over. Their calls are eventually drowned out by the roaring flames that continue to spread. By the time the voice has been entirely drowned out, my consciousness has extinguished. And this is dawn. Ah! ah. Mm, I wake up from my own uncontrollable scream. Oh dear, the screams indeed it would be. Good. Although the music is quite daunting. What an awful nightmare. I was engulfed by flames and died. I'm drenched in sweat. My breathing is beyond ragged. Even worse, I notice a strange black blob on my stomach, all the while wondering why I even had such a dream. Oh, it's just you. Ah, it's a cat. Nothing growing on the stomach. Aw, what a nice kitty. This is our cat, Leif. I'm still not sure if my grand got it or if it was originally a stray, but it's made Lionhouse its home. It's been here as long as I can remember, but it's still pretty lively despite its age. Maybe I was struggling to breathe because it's lying on my stomach. Is that why I dreamt what I did? It jumps from the bed and scatters off when it realizes I'm about to get up. Must be nice to do whatever you want. They say cats are free spirits, and leave us a perfect example. I don't know where it usually goes to hang out, but it doesn't cause any trouble here, and it knows where to do its business. 
My gran always said that trying to keep a cat caged is about as pointless as trying to catch clouds. In other words, she's had her fair share of trouble with it as well. Mm. Hmm. I have myself a good stretch before I get ready to open the store. Today's a holiday, so it needs to be open nice and early. Hmm. Holidays are a good opportunity for customers. Ah, just as I think I can relax a bit after the morning customers have left, the bell on the door chimes. Miharu. Hi there. Good morning, Rinka. Good morning indeed, Rinka. In trots a tall and stylish girl with matching looks. The sun reflects off her long silky hair, enough to make it seem like she's generating her own light with each and every step. That's Mihalu for you. She's a classmate of mine and part of our to be avoided group, but in her case, it's more because she's practically perfect in every regard, so people find it hard to approach her. Are you off work today? Nah, my shift starts soon. Uh, I should have figured, considering she's wearing her school uniform. She normally wears her own clothes when we're out in public, but I guess she can't be bothered to pick out or well, pick something out to wear for work. Helps her to avoid getting hit on by guys on the way home too. Not sure how that works exactly, but hey. Thing is. She works way out in Akihabara. Ah, that town, that town, if you're familiar with Strange Gate. This is by Shinjuku, pretty much the opposite side of town. So why'd she go out on her way to come here? Does she need something? Okuatada. <laughs> Just popping by to see your face. We didn't get to talk much yesterday, and since we're off for the next few days, I wanted to talk to you before vacation start. Oh. Vacation oh. staff. Oh. Right, thanks. I have to admit, there's a certain facet of Meho that I just don't get. I'm pretty confident she has some other business out here, yet here she is teasing me. It's hard to find the right response sometimes. Anywho, Anywho, I hate to distract the other customers, so I should be on my way. Time really slipped by as I waited for the opportunity to be with you alone. Why wait? It's all regulars here, so they wouldn't have cared. Hmm. I wish it was pleasant here, but no. Clouds are a mix, the wind is alive, and there's a bit of moisture in the air, for goodness sakes. It's the UK, so... It's excusable to have rain 365 days of the year. I kind of enjoyed taking in all the greenery, so... Okay, whatever floats your boat, I guess. There's a park across from here that's famous all over the country. Apparently, it was an old samurai's garden that became a park after becoming used as a zone for an experimental architectural, architectural project. Yeah. Agri I'm sorry, agriculture. Ah, not only does it have all sorts of flowers from here, England and France, but there's also plenty of tourists who come by to see it. Unfortunately, we're a bit out of a way to draw them in as customers, but a couple of foreigners do find us and stop by every now and again. We have a good view of it from here. Although I don't think it's the kind of thing you can enjoy for long. Mahalu has some particular tastes though. So who knows? Maybe she can. 
ではお邪魔しました<laughs> ちゃんと休憩は取るんだよ Well, my apologies for intruding. Do you be sure to get some rest, will ya? Sure thing. Good luck with work yourself. Stardust Kingdom must be a shop or something. Oh, before I go, you haven't forgotten our promise to go to the Stardust Kingdom on the 5th, have you? Be sure to tell everyone that the cafe will be closed that day. <laughs> Come on, as if I'd forget. Ah, oh, it's a famous theme park in the Shiba Prefetch. Ah, Stardust Kingdom's a famous park out in the Shiba Prefecture. We've made plans to go over at the end of Golden Week. Fully aware that it'd be at its busiest. <laughs> Just making sure. Considering you your past record. Anyway, see you, see you then. Yeah, bye. Uh, see you later. Mahalu leaves with a smile on her face. I had to stop myself from saying, Bye! Because Mahalu isn't fond of people saying that whenever they part ways. I get where she's coming from. It sounds like what you'd say for a long term parting. But I think she's going a little overboard. Either way, I try to keep myself from using it whenever I, when I can. Ah, just as I'm planning to brew some coffee for myself, someone else makes their way through the door. Wait, Naomi. Naomi! Different clothing this time. Welcome. Oh, Naomi. In comes another friend. Can't say I'm surprised by her cute outfit choice. Uh, oh, good morning. Morning. Come on in. The fact that she didn't mention my heart must mean they didn't cross paths. Naomi seems a little down, though. Not only that, but I can tell she had second thoughts about coming inside. Either because there weren't any other customers, or because she's conscious of the fact that I'm trying to run a business. What's up? I still haven't asked my grand about an easy way for beginners to make some relatively good coffee, so hopefully she hasn't come to ask about that. Uh, I have the option of teaching her myself, but I'd rather not do that with my own relative lack of knowledge. Yesterday, um, I think I must, I might have left something here. Hmm. A book by any chance? A thick, expensive looking one with golden gears on the back and front? Hmm. No, I'm fairly certain I didn't leave a book here. Ah, figures. Not sure why to ask when she never set foot in my room, so obviously she wouldn't have left anything there. Turns out it's her pencil case. She could have just sent me a message about it last night, but apparently she only noticed it was gone this morning. She lives here in the Shinjaka area, so she decided to take a walk and drop by to pick it up. Oh, uh, my mum just messaged me. Guess I left it on the kitchen table. Sorry about this. Well, that settles it. It's so Naomi to do something like this, though. Since you mentioned it, what kind of book were you talking about earlier? Hmm, she jumps back to a topic I'm not expecting. Oh, did I pique your interest? You certainly did. I'm curious because you said it seems expensive. But will you be able to find it? It's one of those grimoires, I believe. Makes sense. Considering you're into books, give me a second, I'll bring it down. <coughs> Sorry. Not like I have any customers right now, and the street's fairly empty. 
I'll make my way up to the stairs to get it. Here you go. And a burn cover with golden well, gold leaf decorations. I can tell Naomi's impressed, judging by the hushed noises she makes while examining the cover. Hmm. This trumps what I'd imagined. It seems really old, but it doesn't have the smell that other old books do. Um, do you mind if I open it? Go ahead, it's pretty weird. How so? Hmm, her inquisitive look shifts to a confused expression upon opening it. Can't blame her. There aren't any real pages, just a big rectangular hole in the middle. Mm. Could be tarot cards or something else far more fantastical. You're right, this is weird. It reminds me of those old magical books that were popular back in the day. Card, book? card books? Did you... Did you ever watch that one show where a girl would transform using cards and fight things? Mm. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Hmm, the book is just a glorified box for you to store the cards in, so... Wait a minute. Aren't those cards at the bottom? I didn't notice at first because they're so thin, but... Mm. Oh, you're right. They share, they share the same pattern as the cover, so I never noticed. Can I take them out? That's probably the correct choice. We probably shouldn't mess with it anymore. It might be my grand's. Let me ask her about it first. It's no regular book, at least. I feel bad if we uncover something she's been wanting to keep secret. That's why it's best to ask before we pry any further. Naomi's hands fly off the book almost immediately after I said that. <laughs> As I say, curiosity kills the cat. S sorry, I always get so carried away when it comes to books. I shouldn't have been fiddling with it so much. Don't worry about it. I'm the one who brought it down. You could tell she was entranced by it. I guess a book like this would fascinate anyone who's as into books as her. Okay, I should probably put it back upstairs. What the book? Ah! As soon as those words fall out of my mouth, someone new walks through the door. A natural customer. Not one of the regulars, though. A woman with a suitcase. Likely a tourist from abroad. Hmm, she ends up asking where her hotel was, which is apparently closer to Shingaku. I end up telling her that she, she's come out a bit too far out. Apparently she comes to Japan alone to tour all the famous temples, but is in a bit of a pinch but she couldn't understand the language. Once I tell her where to go, she thanks me and goes on her way. She doesn't order anything, but she is kind enough that I can forgive her. <laughs> wow, I had no idea you were that good at English. <laughs> Naomi couldn't contain her excitement after the woman leaves. What do you mean? I'm awful at it. <laughs> Are you trying to be humble? You were speaking fluent English to that lady. Huh? Now I'm the one who's surprised. We were speaking English? It felt as natural as any other conversation to me. Then again, she did mention that she didn't understand Japanese. There's no way she'd say that if we had such a fluent conversation. What's going on here? I hope you didn't expect an answer from me. 
Uh, after putting the book upstairs, I returned with one of my English textbooks. Throw some questions at me. Okay, how about some basic vocab? Let's see. She throws some questions at me like I ask, and ayo and behold, I can barely answer them. See? Bad doesn't begin to, to describe my English skills. Hmm. I understand that, but now I'm concerned for a different reason. She tries to be as polite as possible when pointing out my inadequacy. Funnily enough, she didn't even have to look back from to, to the textbook for the last few questions. It's worth noting that, while studying isn't exactly my forte, English is a subject I struggle with more than others. I think it's something to do with the grimoire book. That makes the fact that you were talking with her all the more strange then. It felt like I was having a regular conversation, so if anything, I'm more dubious about whether or not Naomi's right. I doubt anything will come from thinking it over for now, so I'll pay more attention to the next time a foreigner comes in. Well, now that I'm here, can I order a coffee, please? Not for free, of course. I don't mind, but don't worry. I meant it when I said I really like the coffee you make. The smile on her face is almost blinding as she speaks. I can feel my cheeks warming to a bright red. It's hard to describe the happiness those words install with me, install me with. It might actually be the first time anyone said that to me, considering I mainly serve regulars. They typically compared me to my gran, which isn't all bad, but they never praised me as an individual. That's why I can't help but be taken aback by what she said. Enough so that I struggle to give her a proper response, let alone think for it. Thank her for it. I make some coffee to her, for her, and she slips on it while reading a book. As she does that, I handle I, I either handle orders from customers or clear up the tableware. Once an hour has passed, Naomi gets her things together and comes over to the register. I feel bad taking money from a junior, but she seems satisfied enough. Oh yeah, you got any plans for the last day of Golden Week? Sunday, I mean? Um, no, I don't. Why? That's a lovely way of putting it. Me, Mahu, so me, Mayo, and Maholu are planning on going to the Stardust Kingdom, but would rather have an even number so no one ends up on a ride alone. Wanna come? <laughs> Stardust Kingdom? I'd love to go. Good. I'll tell the others, and we'll get a group chat set up for it. Actually, will Maholu be okay with this? Huh? Do you two not get along? Well, no need to worry about that. So long as you're up for it, and your purse permits it, you're welcome to come. Hmm. Okay, if you say so. Hmm. I'm not quite sure why she's acting so reserved in regards to Mahalu, but at least she's willing to join us. I get back to work after seeing her off. The first thing I do once I return to my room at the end of the day is message my gran. 
Okay, I think this is a good time to end off this part of the game. I'm really liking this at the moment. For goodness sakes, there's some really, really nice dialogue here. So thank you so much for watching, guys. We will be returning to Fatal 12 in... Well, it's going to be pretty soon. But thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've made it this far into the video, then thank you very much. Please subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Uh, please note down below what other visual novels you'd like to see in the future in regards to let's plays that is and I know that the developers of this game also made um, what's the game called it's something to do with sounds of poison or uh, hold on looking for my steam stuff right now um, sound of drop fall into poison that's the one that is the one indeed so that's also a game that they made, which I may also do a let's play on. Depending on how these things go. But let me know if you prefer the voice acts on or the voice acts off. It, if it was in English, then I'll be more inclined to leave it on. But as it's in Japanese, I'll be more into the factor of if you like it on, then I'll leave it on. Or if you prefer it off, then I'll turn it off. Then, Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys, and take care of yourselves.